What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've already told you guys that my beloved RTX 2080 took a crap on me and uh, it's in the process of being RMA'd and being, coming back to me and don't worry, there'll be a video on that when it's done. Uh, but in the interim, I've had to take my GTX 1060 out of the build I just did, I'll link it up here for you guys, uh, and I've had to use that as my main card. Uh, so this got me thinking, what would happen if I put that in there and I benchmarked it with my Ryzen 7 3700X? Would the performance be the exact same as the build I just did with the Ryzen 5 2600 as the graphics card is usually the most used component when it comes to gaming? Or will I actually see some kind of a performance jump because of the 8 uh, eight core 16 thread processor that I do have in my system right there over the six core 12 thread processor that I was using in the budget build that I just did. Uh, I don't know why I wanted to do this. Honestly, I don't think any of you guys even asked for this video. Nobody did, uh, but I felt like I had to do it for science. Yes, science. Okay. Uh, and I just was honestly really curious to see like in 2019, 20, going into 2020, how much does a CPU upgrade actually do you as far as gaming goes? Uh, or is it still all about the graphics card? So let's go ahead and roll the intro and we'll get right into it. Let's go. Okay, so before we get into everything, let me just go ahead and grab the camera here and take you guys over to my PC where I can show you guys. So we're gonna be running the exact same benchmarks as we did in our budget build that we just did. And uh, I'm gonna be using the exact same settings, everything. I even overclocked the graphics card to the exact same settings. And I even downclocked my Ryzen 7 3700X uh, to 3.9 gigahertz, just like the other system was. And I even underclocked my RAM to 3000 megahertz to make sure everything was the same. No extra infinity fabric performance, no extra clock performance. I wanted it to be the exact same and see if just the amount of cores gets you more uh, performance in 2019 right now in games uh, or if it doesn't really matter and you should just go ahead and upgrade your graphics card. That's that's honestly all I want to know. So let's go ahead and get over to the computer, do some benchmarks and we'll figure it out. So our first test is Fire Strike as always and it seems like in synthetic tests the Ryzen 7 3700X actually does edge out the Ryzen 5 2600 and that's got to be because of the CPU scores. Uh, the, the more cores actually do matter in synthetic benchmarks versus actual games so it does make sense that we we're seeing the 3700X edge out the 2600 in this. And taking a look at Time Spy, it's the exact same story with the 3700X beating it by almost exactly 200 points again. Okay, superposition. Th this one will definitely be different, right? Nope, exactly the same. Still about a 200 point difference. Are you guys seeing a trend here? Okay, and then with Unige in heaven, things start to actually get interesting because if you're waiting to see a 200 point increase, you're not going to. It's exactly the same. Well, it actually looks like the 2600 beat the 3700X, but really this is within a margin of error and it's basically the exact same. All right, all right, enough with the synthetic benchmarks. Let's actually benchmark some games. I know you guys are wanting that more. Uh, and just remember, just like last time, I'm gonna be recording most of these with Shadow Play, so it does hit the frame rate just about by like 10 to 15 FPS on every benchmark run, so just keep that in mind. And as we kick things off here with CSGO, uh, if you remember back to the Ryzen 5 2600, we were getting anywhere from 180 to 190 FPS in this game, which is just fine. Uh, sometimes it dips down in the 170s, but still a great frame rate for a game like this. But it gets very interesting when we actually switch over to the 3700X system. So taking a look at the 3700X system, you can actually see that we're getting anywhere from 230 frames per second, you know, 220 easy all day long. And uh, I think this has to do with the actual utilization of the CPU within this game, uh, because if you check out the CPU number up in the top left corner, uh, you can see that CSGO actually does utilize the CPU about 20 to 30% while you're playing this game. So this may be one of those titles that actually does take advantage of your CPU. Moving on to Fortnite with the Ryzen 5 2600 system, we can see that again, this does actually use the CPU a bit just like CSGO does, but you can also see that the GPU number is 
highly taxed and it goes all the way up to, you know, between of course 95 and 100%. And when we move over to the 3700X system, you can definitely see that we are getting about the exact same frame rate on this system. But if you look at the CPU number, it's utilizing less of the CPU and more of the GPU, which leads me to believe that it has not utilized the extra cores in this game and it is more heavily dependent on your GPU. Now moving over to Apex Legends, this game is actually known for being a more CPU dependent game and you can definitely see that in the CPU number with the Ryzen 5 2600. Uh, you can see that it's going up to about 40% sometimes. But if we take a look at the Ryzen 7 3700X system, you can see we're getting a higher frame rate in this area of the game. Honestly, I really think that it is just dependent on where you're at in the game because on both systems I was seeing very similar numbers uh, in the realm of you know 110 to 120, 120 frames per second and it does utilize less of the CPU with the 3700X system but you can still see that it is still heavily dependent on the graphics card and in the Borderlands 3 benchmark we're seeing more of the same with the Ryzen 5 2600 system getting a 68.44 FPS average and the Ryzen 7 3700X system only beating it by about 2 FPS getting a 69.91 there's that number two again I swear to god somebody's messing with me and COD Modern Warfare was one that was actually the most different out of all of these because we actually saw a bit of an FPS increase from system to system. Now the Ryzen 5 2600 was getting about just over 100 FPS and you can see that the CPU utilization is just about pinged at 40% the whole time. And the Ryzen 7 3700X has the exact same CPU utilization but it actually sees about a 10 FPS increase the entire time that I did this run. So leads me to believe that COD Modern Warfare actually does take a little bit advantage of more cores and games. And finally with Red Dead Redemption 2, I actually thought that this was going to be a title where I'd see a lot of variants in, uh, but you guys are not going to be surprised by this one because it's just exactly as the other ones are. With the CPU utilization being about 25-30% to 30 on both systems, and both systems achieved almost the exactly the same FPS score. With the Ryzen 5 2600 system taking an average FPS of 54.637, but if you look at the maximum FPS, it's at 91.88. Keep that in your mind as we look at the other FPS score real quick. Now the Ryzen 7 3700X system gets a 54.1293, which is basically the exact same as the other system, but it does get a maximum FPS of 128. And now these weird variance numbers could be because I actually did record this one with Shadowplay and the other system would not work with Shadowplay. Uh, and of course, with Shadowplay, it is taking some frames away, so there may actually have been a small increase to the frame rate uh, in Red Dead on the 3700X system. But again, it's just a very small increase. Okay, well that went just about as I expected it. Uh, so basically my bottom line here with my little scientific test, I don't even know if it was scientific, it was honestly some kind of just like, I just wanted to do it, just some kind of thought I had. Basically I just kind of proved that you're going to see maybe a negligible performance increase in gaming with more cores, and really it is up to your graphics card to do most of the heavy lifting in, mo in most of modern uh, games, uh, unless the game that you're playing is specifically CPU bound, uh, and even then, higher clock speeds will usually get you more performance anyway. Uh, so if you just upgrade to a CPU that just basically just has more cores, uh, I know a lot of you ask me about this all the time, you know, should you just upgrade to a more core processor, whatever, do you need to get this? To be honest, if you have above a four core processor right now, uh, a more modern processor that has four cores or more, I would say upgrade your graphics card, worry about your processor later, unless you're a creator, you're some kind of person that edits video, photos, something like that, and you do a lot of multitasking or multi-threaded work, that's the case when your multi-threaded processor upgrade is going to benefit you the most, okay? So if you're doing a lot of video editing stuff like that, then that is the time that you need to upgrade your processor. You need to get up to something beefy so you can render faster, okay? But if you're just gaming and you wanna get more performance, you wanna push out more frames, it's all about your graphics card, you guys. That's really it. Uh, I kinda just wanted to prove it to myself and just do a, si a little science experiment, so I'm glad I did. And I'm glad you guys came along for the ride with me. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys give it a like as always. Uh, if you guys have any comments, if you guys have any thoughts of your own, make sure you leave it in the comments section. Uh, if you have any more ideas on little like, science experiments I can do like this one, please let me know because I would love to do them. Uh, and if you guys really enjoy my content, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on so you can be notified on my next video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.